My name is Jeroen Ooms. Um, if you don't know me, I'm part of the, of the R Open Sci Group uh, at UC Berkeley. Um, this is our, uh, our team. Um, and I maintain a lot of R packages, uh, many of them uh, wrapping external uh, libraries, external C and C++ libraries. And uh, in addition, I'm also uh, the maintainer of uh, the Windows installers for R base and R tools. And uh, the current talk will be uh, on the intersection of these two things. Um, and I will uh, go into um, what's involved with building R on Windows, and in particular, how we're going to try to improve that for the next generation of the compiler tool chain. All right, so first, I'm going to uh, explain a little bit about uh, how it currently works and what, uh, how R tools currently works, and then in the second part, um, I'll, um, I'll introduce the new tool chain, which is currently experimental, in which we're beta testing, uh, hopefully to be included with the next major release of R. So what's our tools? Um, well, to, to understand that, you need to take a step back. So in order to compile things, uh, both base R as well as packages, you need a compiler. Um, and on Linux and Mac OS, there is a native compiler on the system. Uh, Linux is usually GCC, and on Mac OS we have uh, a Clang with, with uh, uh, Xcode. But on Windows, there's no such thing. Um, so on Windows, we need, to, uh, we need to provide our own compiler tool chain, and that is, that is R tools. Uh, so R tools, if you've ever had to uh, install a package from source of Windows, it's this thing you install uh, separately. And um, um, it helps you with, uh, with building stuff on Windows. There's no timer, but that's all right. All right. So our tools has been around for quite a while. Uh, I didn't invent this, as you can see from this uh, retro 90s uh, homepage on CRAN. It has an archive of all of the R tools going back like a decade or two. So this is something that's being uh, supported for quite a while. And I've only uh, taken over on maintenance last year. So please don't blame me for everything that's suboptimal. So what, what does the workflow look like? So you install this thing, um, and then uh, you have this installation dialog, and it, you can choose which components you want to install. So there's the tool chains, which are like the most important thing. Uh, some build utilities, mostly make and a shell, and a tar to extract stuff, um, which are also needed to install our packages. And then the other things are sort of optional. Um, the last thing is only needed if you want to build R itself which you should never do. Um, but that, you know, it's like libicu and techinfo and tcltk. All right, so, uh, yeah, so this is what I just said. Um, and so, um, to summarize, R tools is needed um, to build base R. And uh, if you want to build um, R packages on Windows, which contain C or C++ or Fortran code. Um, and this is the part that most users are familiar with. But then there's also a, a very big third thing, which is um, external libraries. So a lot of uh, both base R and a lot of R packages are using uh, external system libraries. And those system libraries need to be compiled with the same tool chain and same um, configuration as we're using for base R. And that is, uh, uh, that is sort of a, a dark piece of the ecosystem right now. Uh, so if you've seen any of my previous talks, you've maybe seen this picture. So this is what the dependency system looks like. You have all of your packages, and they depend on R. And R itself depends on like a lot of external libraries that we all need to build with the same tool chain in order to build R for Windows. And many R packages, they also depend on like a bunch of other external libraries. And this is, um, yeah, this is uh, a lot of uh, work to, to uh, build all these things. Um, so 
currently um, we're doing this manually. Um, so there's the, our WinLIP organization in which we uh, manually um, uh, release uh, binaries for uh, like the most uh, important external C and C++ libraries which are used by CRAM packages. Uh, and and um, there's currently, as you can see there, there's seven, uh, 73 libraries in there right now, but that's not counting dependencies. So, you know, for example, one, one of these libraries can depend on a dozen more other sub-libraries. So there's like hundreds of uh, external libraries uh, that, are, that are in there. Yeah, and um, this, uh, this, this is kind of suboptimal. Uh, maintaining these builds is, is a lot of work. Um, and if you want to build an R package that needs any of these libraries, um, it's kind of a bit of a hack because you know, the package author or the build server would need to manually download these libs and then put them in a special location and then like, you know, mingle with the compiler and the linker flags on your system, or you can like have a script in your package that automatically downloads them. But you know, it's not the way the world's supposed to work. So um, for the next R tools, I wanted to sort of improve the situation. Um, and I've looked around a bit and how, other, um, uh, how this is done in other places. So uh, we want to take advantage of uh, a, a proper build system um, which we can, uh, uh, so that we can more easily build all of these external libraries um, using the same compiler tool chain and the same R tool system as we use to, to build the R packages or, or base R itself. And then we want to automate that, that build process. Um, and also I would like to um, uh, open and uh, um, collaboratively maintain these uh, package build scripts so that it's more easy for uh, other people to contribute uh, a build script of a new external package if they want to use it in their R package. Yeah, so that is sort of the goal of R tools 4.0. And I want to emphasize again that this is something that we're currently beta testing. It's not uh, sure at all if and when it's going to ship, but hopefully it will, uh, maybe for the upcoming release or other, otherwise the one after that. Um, yeah, so you can already test it. If you go to CRAN, on Google RTools40, there's a special page, and there um, you can install uh, RTools 4.0 um, uh, for, uh, for your system. And then there's also a special version of R, which I call R testing, and it's like the R develop build, if you've ever tried this. But has, it has been um, uh, configured to uh, use this new tool chain. So it's sort of hard coded the path to the new uh, tool chain. So these, and it has a, it has a custom uh, uh, location where it installs the packages. So you can use this, uh, you can install this, and you can try with, play with the new R tools and it won't uh, conflict with any other package libraries or so. Uh, that, that are using the, the current stable uh, tool chain. So, so what's the experience like? You install this thing, uh, and then suddenly in your um, start menu, there's this new thing which wasn't there before, because you know, before our tools was just sort of a bundle that you install an operating system, and now there's actually a, a shell, and there's a, there's a thing. Mm, so you're like, what if I click on that? So if you click on that, it opens uh, a terminal window. So there's actually, our tools now actually includes like a full um, uh, terminal with, uh, with, uh, with bash, a shell, and all of the tools that you're, that you're used to, uh, or probably not if you're on Windows, but if you, uh, it all, it's a full Unix-like environment based on MSYS2 and SIGWIN, which has you know, all, of the, all of the build tools that you need to build all of these uh, open source libraries. So uh, what's in the tin? Well, uh, the most important thing is, is uh, there's a nice terminal, uh, and there's the shell and everything that comes with that, you know, bash, and then there's all of these utilities which are part of uh, Sigwin, uh, like make and set and Perl and whatnot. And of course, there's the, there's the compilers, there's the MinGW compilers, uh, one for 32-bit and one for 64-bit windows. 
But the most important thing in new R tools is there's a package manager. There's a real package manager um, to build and install external libraries, you know, just like apt on Debian or yum on, uh, on Enterprise Linux uh, or Homebrew on, um, on OS X. So it's just a very, so what would that look like? Um, if you, uh, the package manager, manager is called Pacman, and then the first command, if you do Pacman, does S stands for uh, sync, and then Y is it syncs with uh, the repository index, and for example, SYU would upgrade all of the installed packages, and then the second block of code shows, for example, how you would install the libxml2 package. And in, in Pacman, there's a separate package for the 32-bit and the 64-bit um, package, but you can install them both uh, with this syntax. Uh, and I want to emphasize I didn't invent Pacman. This is like uh, the, the package manager from Arch Linux, which has been ported to, uh, to Windows, and it's a really nice fit. Um, and it has, it's, it's really nice. It has uh, all of the features that you want to, exp that you can expect from a modern package manager. So it really starts to feel like uh, a proper, uh, operating, proper operating system. So I didn't have the confidence to do a live demo like Gabor. So what does it look like? Uh, there's a shell, and then this is Pac-Man. And um, if you do Pac-Man SY, it updates um, the repository. And here I'm installing the curl package. And it says, you know, curl depends on libssh and open SSL. So we need these things as well. So it starts. Uh, pulling in these things, and then it's installing, blah, blah, blah. And then this is four speed, so <laughs> it's slower in real time. And then it's done, right? And now it's there. So now you can do package, can, package config curl, uh, and it's there. So it's, it's really like, uh, uh, like you would expect from, uh, you know, from apt or yum or so. so. All right, so which Packages do we have? So uh, there's a repository under r-windows rtools packages, which currently contains all of the, um, like, I think about 100 packages that I've ported to this system. Uh, so this repository contains all of the, um, the build formulas for this package. So not the actual binaries, but these are like the, uh, the Pacman um, config file uh, to build these things. Um, and if you look what's in there, every of these subdirectories contains a file called package build, and that um, this defines like the name of the package, like the URL of the source, uh, you know, a bunch of patches, uh, checksums and stuff, and, and you know what's needed to uh, to build the package and install the package. So usually there's like some CMake or or uh, uh, configure uh, line, and then make, and then make install. So what does that look like? So for example, here's an example where they're building the, the popular package, which uh, uses CMake uh, to build. You always have to do make package minGW. Um, so if you do that in the directory that contains this package build file, um, like everything else is automatically done. So it starts pulling in. The, um, uh, the source for, for the popular library. It runs CMake uh, um, on all of these uh, things, and you get the output. And then, you know, if everything works, in the end, uh, it, will, uh, it will compress uh, libraries, strip out some debug symbols, and create an actual uh, a package, like a, which is a, a tar.exe file. So let's run. And here it's done, and now it's sort of tidying up the install, stripping uh, bloat, and then you have an actual R package. And the, and the binary package is this new um, tar.xc file that was created, right? So it's, it's, it's once the formula is in place, like maintaining these things is hopefully going to be much easier than it is now. All right, so that is how you would do it manually, but of course we want to automate it. Um, so if you send a pull request to this library, or in my case, if you push straight to the master branch, 
Um, Hubfair will start building these things, and it look like this. Um, and you can use and you can look at uh, in the log file of the app fair, which are the latest things that uh, that you've built. Um, and this is sort of the the most beautiful part of the system. So it automatically deploys. So um, if you look in the app fair log file towards the end, and if it's uh, if it's the um, uh, if it's in a pull request or a branch, it will then just say it's complete. But if you're in the master branch, it will then automatically deploy everything to Bintray. So all of these, all of the binaries for the for these uh, Windows packages, they are hosted on Bintray, and they are automatically deployed uh, once the build is successful from AppFair. So there's like there's uh, nothing that I have to do other than merging the pull request uh, to actually release these libraries. Right, so once you once you once the build is complete, you, at the bottom here you see it's AppFair starts uploading the binaries to Bindray and it's sort of recalculating the index file, and then uh, you can see it on this uh, on this URL. So this is the URL where uh, all of the all of the binary packages are stored, and this is this is the URL that then Pacman in our tools uses to uh, to grab the packages. So it's live. Immediately, there's there's no manual step anymore. You know, you send the pull request, app for your builds. If it succeeds, it deploys on Bintray, and then you know the next time any user would do Pacman, you know, as update, uh, it starts pulling in these new libraries. So it sort of ties up the circle um, um, really nicely. Yeah. So I hope that um, uh, uh, that this will make the maintenance much easier. Um, and that, um, uh, and I should emphasize that um, these, once you have installed a, a, one of these system libraries using Pacman, uh, our tools will automatically find it when you build an R package that needs a library. So there's no need to set special compiler flags or special linker flags to point to a particular location because Pacman installs it exactly where the linker expects to find it and where the compiler expects to find it, right? So it's, it's going to feel much more like apt or yum or brew where you, if you need a system dependency, you do, do Pacman install and the system dependency is there and then your R package should just build without you know, any further hacking. So uh, in summary, last slide. Um, the new version of our tools will include like uh, a proper build environment that will make it easier for me, uh, for us, <laughs> to uh, to build and install and install all of the external libraries. Pacman uh, will Pacman um, makes it really nice to package and distribute and install these libs, so it's no manual copying of files anymore on build server. Um, R will then automatically find those installed libs, so you don't need to uh, pass special uh, uh, linker flags or include flags when you're installing an R package on Windows from source. And the most important part is that you know these libraries are all going to be transparent and reproducible and automated via the CI. So there's you know there's there should be much less maintenance. But also, I think there's going to be a bit more accountability because currently, you know, I'm just uploading these binaries to our WinLib, but you know, nobody knows how they are built and you know what I what I put in there. And like this, uh, this system is gonna is gonna uh, it's gonna be fully open, fully transparent, fully automated, uh, and everything uh, gets built uh, in a in a public place and then deployed. Um, and you know everyone can uh, can contribute. So um, yeah, that's it. Uh, here are all the slides below. Thanks. Thank you very much, Jeroen, for your talk, and also for making my life as a Windows user so much easier than it would otherwise have been. We have time for one question. This question at the back, I think it's Richie with a golden shirt. Thanks, good throw. Uh, so this sounds like it makes it a lot easier to have more external dependencies. So are there going to be some new dependencies that are users? Sorry. So, uh, 
Um, because it's now easier to have external dependencies for R, are there going to be some more dependencies in base R? Exciting new tools. Yeah, so I hope that, uh, that, this, that this system will make it easier to, uh, to use, uh, uh, to take advantage of these uh, external libraries in R more easily, because previously you're sort of tied to what, I mean on, on, on Linux and Fedora, most of it is available in an homebrew sorta, but on Windows, the system was really limited by, you know, people that were willing to build these things for you, and there's like only two of them that would probably do that. So I hope that this will, I hope not open the floodgates, but um, at least uh, give our users better access to up-to-date, uh, high-quality uh, libraries that now also work on Windows.